It is July 25th, 2017. Welcome to Watchman News. I, um, I was made aware of a document that uh, was, was put in place in 2008. And we, um, as I was speaking a little bit earlier, uh, there was a lot of focus put on certain elements of Obamacare. Um, namely things that would involve um, in medical implants, uh, which is the terminology they used for chipping us, RFID. Um, but there's a, 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 just a number, a host of different things, um, forced vaccination, um, a host of different things that was uh, insane. I mean, beyond insane that was included in Obamacare. And they tried covering it up and pushing things to the side or making an excuse for this or saying, well, that really doesn't mean that. It means something else. And they, they just kept going on and on and on and on with it. And, of course, nothing ever happened. It never got changed. Those parts were never taken out. Um, it stayed the same. Why? Because that was the actual intent of Obamacare to begin with. And it, it, this Trump care thing, and I'm just calling it that because it makes it easy, but this Trump care thing is it's not changing any of that. The Trump care is not making anything better for us. And that, that's, what, that's what we need to realize um, and, and, and to do so pretty quickly. And what I'm about to show you, the document I'm about to show you, again, it's right from the FEMA website. I'll put the link down in the description. Uh, I'll also put the link uh, in chat for you guys, for, for those that are watching now live. And um, it's directly from FEMA. It's not, uh, I'm not going to get this from before it's news or godlike productions or CNN or Alex Jones or, you know, um, this is right from FEMA, straight from FEMA. I think we could uh I, I think we could agree that if it's on their site then they are apparently aware of it. So if they are aware of it, then how come every single one of the citizens in this country uh are not aware of this? It's crazy. It's crazy. Now, a lot of things I want to show you and I want to start out with the support agencies and you can google this too it, it bring it right up what you want to google is emergency support function number eight uh, it's probably within the first couple of uh, things that comes up in your search you will see the fema.gov link on the right here let's talk about this first of all ecf coordinator the coordinator is the T department of health and human services okay that is also the primary agency now let's go back and look at these support agencies because this is where it gets extremely scary just before, you know, right on the first page. Department of Agriculture, Department of Commerce, Department of Defense, Department of Energy, Department of Homeland Security, Department of the Interior, Department of Justice, Department of Labor, Department of State, Department of Transportation, Department of Veterans Affairs, Environmental Protection Agency, General Services Administration, U.S. Agency for International Development, U.S. Postal Service, and the American Red Cross. So, you know, you might look through that list and there's some pretty interesting ones there, ain't there? You know, like, you know, if this is about medical stuff, medical support and all that, then what's really that have to do with Homeland Security? Um, the, um, it, it's insane. What, what, what would, you know, this stuff have to do with the Department of Energy, Department of Defense, right? Department of Labor. I mean, this is crazy. But the one that really scares me in this list is right here. U.S. Postal Service. Now, I wonder if anybody might know offhand why that would bother me. Census. The United States Postal Service is responsible for the census, which is an illegal attempt to register who and where everybody in this country is. Okay? It's highly illegal. You can go and, and search on YouTube. There's tons of information and videos and all that out there about uh, about the census. Uh, there's also tons of information, videos out there about what happens if you try to ignore, you know, the voluntary census. They tell you it's voluntary. 
So anyway, let's go ahead and see what it is. What, what it is, you know, that the census would need to be involved in, Homeland Security, or, you know, a lot of these are kind of mixed match. Doesn't make sense that they're together, right? I could understand if this was like a national defense type of document or something, then every one of those would make sense to me. Every last one of those would make sense to me. But this is not a document for national security. Introduction. Purpose. Emergency Support Function ECF number 8, Public Health and Medical Services, provides the mechanism for coordinated federal assistance to supplement state, tribal, and local resources in response to a public health or, or public health and medical disaster, potential or actual incidents requiring a coordinated federal response and or during a developing potential health and medical emergency. The phrase medical needs is used throughout this annex. Public health and medical services include responding to medical needs associated with mental health, behavioral health, and substance abuse considerations of incident victims and response workers. Services also cover the medical needs of members of the at-risk or special needs population. Described in Pandemic and All Hazards Preparedness Act. Really? So, so the at-risk and special needs folks are described, they're, they're essentially identified in the Pandemic and All Hazards Preparedness Act? I thought you told me I couldn't catch CP. <laughs> I mean, that's how crazy this is. That's how crazy this is. It's insane. What, what is that saying? Does, does anybody get this? Pandemic and All Hazards Preparedness Act. Now, I want to remind you right now, I, I want to remind you right now that everybody that receives any medication or treatment of any kind for any type of mental health is uh, included in that. All these children that now have autism, included in it. Now, I've spoke many, many different times about the parts of Obamacare that actually gave the government control of everybody that was receiving any type of mental health or um, any type of, of, of thing, you know, help with, like, with the autism, with Down syndrome, any of these types of special needs. Um, the government actually has ownership of every one of those people. That's a fact. And I've, I've, I've tried, I've tried and I've tried to explain this to people. And I've tried to get them to listen to some common sense and some reasoning or possibly maybe even pick up a document and read it. But it goes nowhere. It goes absolutely nowhere. I'm just a crazy tinfoil hat wearing conspiracy theorist. Okay, let's see. It includes a population whose members may have medical and other functional needs before, during, and after an incident. Of course, you know, they're going to word this all in ways to where they're being helpful to us. That's the way they work. Public health and medical services include behavioral health needs consisting of both mental health and substance abuse considerations for incident victims and response workers and, as appropriate, medical needs groups defined in the core document as individuals in the need of additional medical response assistance and veterinary and or animal health issues. Scope ESF number 8 provides supplemental assistance to state, tribal, and local governments in the following core functional areas. Assessment of public health slash medical needs, health surveillance, medical care personnel, health medical veterinary equipment and supplies, patient evacuation, patient care, safety and security of drugs, biologics and medical devices, blood and blood products, food, safety, and security. Oh, that makes me feel so much better. Doesn't you, don't you feel so much better? Just more calm now? I mean, the government's here to help us and protect us and take care of us. That's amazing. That's incredible. Murka. 
Let's see. Agric <laughs> Agriculture safety and security. All hazard public health and medical consultation. I know it's consultation. Sorry. Technical assistance and support. Behavioral health care, public health and medical information, vector control, hmm. potable water, wastewater and solid waste disposal. Yeah, because they're doing a real good job with that up in Flint, Michigan. Uh, mass fatality management. Hmm. Hmm. Mass fatality management. Now, now, what has happened that we are not only aware of, um, but is even in the intro video for the show. What is it that's in there that would align with mass fatality management? Now, well, maybe it's thousands of plastic coffins. Wow. Uh, let's see. Victim identification and decontaminating remains. Veterinary medical support. See, now that's my luck, right? I, I would be in need of help, and I wouldn't get the, 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 the human doctor. I would get the animal doctor. And, like, replace my hand with a hoof or something. Anyway, um, policies. The Secretary of Public Health... Or, sorry, I'm adding words there. The Secretary of Health and Human Services leads all federal public health and medical response to public health emergencies and incidents covered by the NRF. The response addresses medical needs and other functional needs of those in need of medical care, including assistance or support in maintaining independence, communicating, using transportation, and or requiring supervision. Yeah, I should probably have adult supervision, but aside from that, let me see here. Um, uh, the secretary, uh, let's see... Um, the sec Secretary of HHS will, shall assume operational control of federal emergency public health and medical response assets as necessary in the event of a public health emergency, except for members of the armed forces who remained under the authority and control of the Secretary of Defense. The sec Secretary of HHS, through the Office of the Assistant Secretary for Preparedness and Response, ASPR, coordinates National ESF No. 8 Preparedness, Response, and Recovery Actions. These actions do not alter or impede the existing authorities of any department or agency supporting ESF No. 8. HHS coordinates all ESF No. 8 response actions, and I know this stuff is boring, folks. I know that. I get that. Hang with me. Uh, let's see. HHS coordinates all ESF number eight response actions consistent with HHS medical, or I'm sorry, internal policies and procedures. Um, an example, the HHS concept of operations plan for public health and medical emergencies and the National Disaster Medical System for Partner Memorandum of Agreement. Sheesh. Like you couldn't even remember that, right? Even if you had a photographic memory, you couldn't remember that. ESF number eight, support agencies are responsible for maintaining administrative control over their respective response resources after receiving coordinated instructions from HHS. The Emergency Management, Management Group, operating from the HHS Secretary's Operations Center, coordinates the overall national ESF number eight response for the SPR and maintains constant communications with the National Operations Center. See, they write stuff like this because it bores people and they won't read it. That's, that's, that's essentially why they put a bunch of jargon in with their, with their stuff because people, people won't read it. All the headquarter and regional Organizations, including those involved with other ESFs participating in response operations, report public health and medical requirements to the appropriate ESF number eight representative operating in the National Response Coordination Center, the Regional Response Coordination Center, or the Joint Field Office when activated. The Joint Information Center will be established to coordinate incident-related repub uh, public information and is authorized to release general medical and public health response information to the public. When possible, a recognized spokesperson from the public health and medical community, state, tribal, or local, delivers relevant community messages after consultation with HHS 
The lead public affairs officer from other JICs may also release general medical and public health response information. By the way, the good stuff, they never put it up top. Emergency port function number eight, public health and medical services annex. In the event of a zoonotic disease outbreak, I'm not even sure what that is, um, and in coordination with ESF number 11, agriculture and natural resources, public information may be released after consultation with the Department of Agriculture. In the event of an oil, chemical, biological, or radiological environmental contamination incident, ESF number 8 coordinates with ESF number 10, oil and hazardous materials response on the release of public health information. As a lead agency for ESF number 8, HHS determines the appropriateness of all requests for release of public health and medical information and is responsible for consulting with and organizing federal public health and medical subject matter experts as needed. Now, pay attention to that one because I know I had a bunch of Borden leading up to this, but this is some of the meat right here. As the lead agency for ESF number 8, HHS determines the appropriateness of all requests for release of public health and medical information and is responsible for consulting with and organizing federal public health and medical subject matter experts as needed. So in other words, they want to have the power to completely control any knowledge, information, or anything about the incident. In other words, we could have a major incident happen and they could choose not to tell us and uh, and that's covered. Boom, right there. Because they gave them that authority to do that. So, you know, we, we really have to take a look at this kind of stuff and we have to, since you know, ever since 2008, we have to look at all these different outbreaks and all these stuff like this. We have to look at these and we had to think, wow, wait a minute. There might have been more propaganda involved in that than I originally thought. Probably so. Anyway, concept of operations. General, we're going to get into the good stuff. Upon notification, the ASPR alerts identified HHS personnel to represent ESF number 8 as required in or on the domestic readiness group, planning element or watch, NOC, the NRCC, NRCC, I mean RRCC slash JFO, national slash regional teams, JIC, other federal, state, or tribal operations centers as required by the mission. And don't you think it's interesting, by the way, that they seem to neglect the Native Americans in just about every aspect that you could think of, but they make sure to include them in this documentation. Isn't that incredible? What nice folks. HHS notifies and requests all supporting departments and agencies to participate in headquarters coordination activities. The ASPR may request ESF number 8 support agencies and organizations to provide liaison, ah, I never can say that word, liaison, personnel, huh? Liaison. That's why I mess it up all the time, because I try to say lie instead of lie. Um, Anyway, sorry, just uh, letting you in on a little bit of my... I don't even know if it could be considered broken English, to be honest. Um, (laughs) So anyway, here we go. Uh, Let's see. I think, yeah, I did that. HHS headquarters and ESF number 8. Okay, that's one I just did. Sorry. Regional ESF number 8. Staff may be assisted by supporting federal partners and HHS components. ESF, wow. Number eight, staff in the RRCC or JFO. Okay, let's just let's just get this out of the way. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. No, yeah, I mean, might as well. Uh, <laughs> anyway, they will conduct a risk analysis, evaluate, and determine the capability required to meet the mission objective and provide required public health and medical support, medical assistance to state, tribal, and local medical and public health officials. In the early stages of an incident, 
it may not be possible to fully assess the situation and verify the level of assistance required. So, right, what do you, what do, you do? What do you do? I, I haven't even read the rest of it out, right? If you don't know what size hammer you're going to need, you take the biggest hammer. Am I right? So, anyway, uh, let's see. In such circumstances, HHS may, may provide assistance under its own statutory authorities. In these cases, every re reasonable attempt is made to verify the need before providing assistance. During the response period, HHS has primarily, or, yeah, primary responsibility for the analysis of public health and medical assistance, determining the appropriate level of response capability based on the requirement contained in the action request form, as well as developing updates and assessments of public health status. Organization Headquarters. The Secretary of HHS leads the ESF number 8 response. ESF number 8, when activated, is coordinated to the, or it, uh, coordinated by the ASPR. Once activated, the SF number 8 functions are coordinated by the EMG through the SOC. EFG. <laughs> um, emergency support. Okay, that's sorry. That's just the title. Uh, during the initial activation, HHS coordinates audio and video conference calls with the SF number 8 supporting departments and agencies and public health and medical representatives from state, tribal, and local officials to discuss the situation, determine the appropriate initial reaction or response actions. I get bored reading it. I don't blame you. HHS alerts and requests supporting organizations to provide a representative to the EMG to provide liaison <laughs> support. Got it right, didn't I? Okay. I'm going to put that on post-it note on my monitor so I never mess it up again. <laughs> Anyway, public health and medical subject matter experts, including partners representing all appropriate populations, such as pediatric populations, populations with disabilities, the aging, and those with temporary or chronic medical conditions from HHS and ESF number 8 organizations are consulted as needed. Uh, let's see, regional. HHS coordinates ESF number 8 field response activities according to the internal policies and procedures. HHS may designate a senior health official to serve as the senior federal health official in the JFO. Regional ESF number eight staff are ready to rapidly deploy as the incident response coordination team, advanced IRCT-A, will provide initial ESF number eight support to the affected location. As the situation matures, the IRCT-A will receive augmentation from the HHS and partner agencies transitioning into a full IRCT capable of providing the full range of ESF number 8 support to include medical command and control. The regional ESF number 8 staff includes representatives to staff the RRCC and or JFO as required on a 24-hour basis for the duration of the incident. How you learn, by the way, to be able to read these a little bit easier, understand them a little bit better, and I've never, I, I probably long ago should have, uh, should have said something about this. If, if, if you really want to know... Um, you know, what, what they are up to, instead of reading it like we're reading it, like you should read it, read it backwards. I'm serious. Read the last page first and then go on up to the first page. And, and it, the picture of what the truth of what they're doing is right there in front of you. But if you read it the way we're doing it, a lot of times there's so many little things you don't catch or you might have a little question, but it's just a tiny question you don't pay much attention to, so you forget about it and you move on. By the time you finish the document, that question's long gone, and uh, and and you know it, it. What it what it is is it relates to other parts of the document. So that's why you read it backwards. So anyway, here we go. Let's see. Uh, H -A oh wait, I read that one. Sorry. H the HHS EMG increases staffing immediately on notification. Oh yeah, initial actions. This is this is the good stuff. Um, well, I say good stuff. I don't mean that literally. Um, increases staffing immediately on notification of an actual or potential public health or medical emergency. 
When activated by the NRCC, HHS consults with the appropriate ESF number 8 supporting organizations to determine the need for assistance according to the functional areas listed below. Assessment of Public Health and Medical Needs HHS, in collaboration, oh, that makes me feel better right there, especially with the Department of Homeland Security. So I'll read that again. In HHS, in collaboration with the Department of Homeland Security, mobilizes and deploys ESF number eight personnel to support national or regional teams to assess, where's the tribal in that one, to assess public health and medical needs, including the needs of at-risk population groups, such as language assistance services for limited English proficient uh, individuals and accommodations and services for individuals with disabilities. This function includes the assessment of the health care system slash facility infrastructure. Now, that, that paragraph, you know, it brings something up in my, my memory that actually comes up quite often. So, you see, they're worried about you, right? So, I, I think back to Katrina, and I see this probably 80-something-year-old lady um, just get, getting brutalized by law enforcement um, because she didn't want to give up her little bitty pea shooter. She had a little bitty revolver. It, it wasn't, you know, I think it was, I don't think it was a real big, I don't think it was like a 40, you know, 44 Magnum or nothing like that, I don't think. I think it was pretty small. It was a revolver, though. I mean, they they hurt that woman bad. And all she wanted to do was be able to protect herself. That's all she wanted to do, right? So this is the type of help, by the way, that, that we can expect. We, we, we can expect them to help by disarming us. We can expect them to help by not allowing us to take care of issues that we could take care of. And if you don't understand what I mean there, go and uh, look back at Katrina and what happened? There were people. There were people lined up, ready to bring water and food and supplies. There were semis lined up, and they wouldn't allow them in. They made them leave. They made them leave. And it was what weeks, weeks after that, before FEMA pulled their heads out of their butts enough to even get some food down there, some fresh water down there. You had tons of people that were were huddled into a a stadium and they were dying. There were living people literally just among with the dead. And I mean, I know that happens. There's not a lot you can do, right? But I mean, this we're talking on a pretty large scale here. Okay, this wasn't, you know, one or two people kicked off yesterday. No. This was quite a few people dying from dehydration, from... You know, lack of this, lack of that, lack of Medicaid. I mean, and, and there were people there. There were people there. There were people that were pulling their wallets and their car, credit cards and stuff out and, and, and assisting with other people to fill up a, a 50 foot or 53 foot semi trailer full of goods to take down there to help. And they wouldn't let them in. So I'm supposed to trust these scumbags? No. No. HHS, oh yeah, I read that one. Sorry. Health surveillance. Gotta love this one. Health surveillance. HHS, in coordination with supporting departments and agencies, enhances existing surveillance systems to monitor the health of the general and medical needs population, carries out field studies and investigations. That's what we need. We need more government studies uh, and investigations. Monitors injury and disease patterns and potential disease outbreaks, blood and blood product, biovigilance, (laughs) and blood supply levels and provides technical assistance and consultations on disease and injury prevention and precautions. Medical care personnel. I'm trying to get through this quick, believe it or not. Immediate, I mean, it's like 16 pages, but if I don't read it, guess what? Most people aren't going to know what's down in here. They might get the first page, maybe the second page, and then after that, um, you know, TV show came on or whatever. Anyway, medical care personnel. Immediate medical response capabilities are provided by assets internal to HHS. 
Uh, an example, the U.S. Public Health Service, Commission Corps, um, NDMS, and Federal Civil Service employees, and from ESF number eight supporting organizations. ESF number eight may request Department of Defense support for casualty clearing and staging, patient treatment, and support services such as surveillance and laboratory diagnostics. Hmm. So, let me get this right. You have a, a, a widespread disaster. Lots of casualties. Lots of craziness going on. And you choose to call the Department of Defense? Wow. That's incredible. That's incredible. Next time I'm drowning, I'll call the fire department. How's that? See if they can spray some water on me and save my life, right? ESF number eight may seek individual clinical public health and medical care specialists from the Department of Veterans Affairs to assist state, tribal, and local public health and medical personnel. ESF number eight may engage civilian volunteers such as Medical Reserve Corps to assist state, tribal, and local public health and medical personnel. Health, medical, veterinary equipment, and supplies. In addition to deploying assets from the strategic national stockpile, ESF number eight may request DOD or the VA to protect or to provide, sorry, medical equipment, durable medical equipment, and supplies, including medical diagnostic and radiation detecting uh, detecting devices, pharmaceuticals, and biologic products in support of immediate medical response operations and for restocking health. Um, let's see, healthcare facilities in an area affected by major disaster or emergency. When a veterinary response is required, assets may be requested from the National Veterinary Stockpile, which is managed by the USDA Animal and Plant Health Inspection Services. Now, I'm going to have to look into this um, because I've never heard of this before in my life. I've never in my life heard of the National Veterinary Stockpile. First time ever, ever heard of it. But I'll tell you what it does sound like to me. It sounds a bit to me like the clergy response team. Okay? Because, see, groups like that aren't mentioned in here. But groups like that, they say the clergy response team, which is also uh, controlled by FEMA is, uh, I- and, and Department of Homeland Security, is, uh, is it's directly directly involved with this because they are going to use um, these these men of cloth that have sold their souls um, to be able to propagandize the public. It's just a fact. Just a fact. Uh, let's see. Patient evacuation. ESF number eight is responsible for transporting seriously ill uh, and says seriously ill describes persons whose illness or injury is of such severity that there is cause for immediate concern, but there is not imminent danger to life or injured patients and medical needs populations from casualty collection points in the impacted area to designated reception facilities. ESF number eight coordinates the federal response in support of emergency triage and pre-hospital treatment, patient tracking, and distribution. The effort is coordinated with the federal, state, tribal, territorial, and local emergency medical service uh, services officials. ESF number eight may request DOD, VA, and DHS federal emergency management agency via the National Ambulance Contract to provide support for evacuating seriously ill or injured patients. Support may include providing transportation assets, operating and staffing NDMS federal coordination centers, and processing and tracking patient movements from collection points to their final destination reception facilities. That kind of sounds scary. I mean, I know that probably wasn't intended there, but it does still sound kind of eerie. DOD is the only recognized federal partner responsible for regulating and tracking patients transported on DOD assets to appropriate treatment facilities. Now, you might want to read that close, and you might want to think on that sentence for a little while, okay? DOD is the only recognized federal partner responsible for regulating and tracking patients transported on DOD assets to appropriate treatment facilities facilities hmm so in other words if it's the DOD that comes to save you you're gonna disappear 
or you could disappear. You essentially could disappear because they would be in complete control of, of that uh, and, and in complete control of any type of documentation that you were even received by them or anything like that. They have total control over that. Do we really want the DOD to have that? Really? Wow. Patient care. I'm telling you, this is... Uh, this is uh, patient care. ESF number eight may task HHS components to engage civil service personnel, the officers from the U.S. Public Health Service Commissioned Corps, the regional offices, and states to engage civilian volunteers and request the VA and DOD to provide available personnel to support pre-hospital triage and treatment, inpatient hospital care, outpatient services, pharmacy services, and dental care to victims who are seriously ill, injured, or suffer from chronic illnesses who need evacuation assistance regardless of location. I have to wait for the apocalypse before I can get my teeth taken care of? That sucks. ESF number 8 may assist with isolation. And by the way, I'm, that was that was in jest. Um, because <laughs> if, if things are, ever do go awry here in this country, um, my, my primary goal is to be a ghost. So, uh, let's see. ESF number 8 may assist with isolation and quarantine measures and with point of distribution operations, mac, mass prophylaxis and vaccination. I'm not quite sure what that word is, the prophylaxis. But are we, are, are we catching anything now? Are we starting to catch anything now? ESF number 8 may assist with isolation and quarantine measures and with point of distribution operation, mass uh, prophylaxis and vaccination. Healthcare providers and support staff will ensure appropriate patient confidentiality is maintained, including health insurance portability and accountability act privacy. And uh, that's the HIPAA act, by the way. That, I, I call that the anti-privacy act, okay? That's more appropriate. It's not, not a privacy act. It's an anti-privacy act. Anyway, uh, um, and security standards were uh, applicable. Safety and security of drugs, biologics, and medical devices. ESF number 8 may task HHS coordinates to ensure the safety and if, uh, efficiency. I don't know if that's supposed to be efficiency or... But anyway, of and advise industry on security measures for regulating human and veterinary drugs, biologics, including blood and vaccines, medical devices, including radiation emitting and screening devices, and other HHS-regulated products. Blood organs and blood tissues. ESF number 8 may task HHS components to request assistance from other ESF number 8 partner organizations to monitor and ensure the safety, availability, and logistical requirements of blood, organs, and tissues. This includes the ability of the existing supply chain resources to meet the manufacturing, testing, storage, and distribution of these products. Food, safety, and security. ESF number 8, in cooperation with ESF number 11, may task... Um, by the way, what I would suggest people do is I would start Googling ESF number whatever. Start at 1. ESF number 1, number 2, number 3, number 4. You get the idea. I bet you'd find a whole lot of interesting stuff if you did that. Let's see. Um... Okay, let me make sure I got this. Okay, um, I, I don't know where I was at. Sorry, I hate rereading stuff. Uh, may task HHS components and request assistance from other ESF number 8 partner organizations to ensure the safety and security of federally regulated foods. Note, HHS, through the Food and Drug Administration, another great organization, has statutory authority for all domestic and imported food except meat, poultry, and egg products, which are under the authority of the USDA Food Safety and Inspection Service. The Environmental Protection Agency establishes tolerance levels for pesti pesticide residues. And don't you love that, right? The EPA, they're such great people. They are here to help us. I mean, look, when, when all that happened in Flint, Michigan, they ran up there as quick as they possibly could and raised the acceptable safe levels. Yeah, that's what they did. They raised the acceptable safe levels. You know, because they love us. Anyway, agriculture safety and security. 
ESF No. 8, in coordination with ESF 11, may task HHS components to ensure the health, safety, and security of food-producing animals, animal feed, and therapeutics. Note, HHS, through the FDA, has statutory authority for animal feed and for the approval of animal drugs intended for both therapeutic and non-therapeutic use in food animals as well as companion animals. So, okay, let me break this down for you. Let's say you happen to be a farmer. Well, number one, and, and this, um, this, you, uh, I forget where it was at. I know it's in, uh, I think it's part of the Patriot Act, and I think there's another act out there that it's a part of, um, in which the government can just come and, and uh, let's say you're a farmer, you own a farm, you've got cows, you've got, you know, fields, you've got whatever, and uh, the government can literally come and just take it from you. It's there. Boom. Take it right from you. You have no discussion, and if you even try to rebuttal it, guess guess what's going to happen? So, um, that's some pretty crazy powers. But even beyond that, right? They control the food and medications for those animals. You know what I mean? So it's not just the animals. It's also the food and the medication of those animals. So if you do happen to, uh, to be able to hide a pig or whatever the case may be, um, you, you, you still got to go to the master and kiss his boots to get a little, little hog feed, I guess. I, I don't know. It's, it's crazy. It really is, folks. This is, this is real. We really need to be raising nonstop hell. Okay. Worker safety and health. And again, folks, I know this is boring. I get this. I'm just one of those lame dudes that read it anyway, right? I know it's boring. And I gave probably the best advice for being able to understand all the jargon uh, if, if, if you're not inclined to do that. Because they, they make things pretty confusing. Um, but if you read a bill or an act from the bottom to the top instead of the top to the bottom, you'll understand it a million times better. They do that on purpose, right? Like they've got to put this stuff out there. Technically, they've got to put this information out there, right? They can't just show up at your door one day and say, oh, we did this in 2008. We didn't post it. We didn't announce it. We didn't get it ratified. We didn't do nothing. We just we decided we were going to do it. And guess what? We're here. How you doing? Give me your cows, right? Worker safety and health. Under agreement with the U.S. Department of Labor, Department of Labor is the lead federal agencies for worker safety and health. ESF number 8 slash HHS is a supporting agency. Refer to the NRF Worker Safety and Health Support Annex for detailed information. By the way, I just noticed uh, I, I, di I didn't really catch that so much in the last one under the agriculture, safety, and security, and it just caught my eye, companion animals. So yeah, in, in the event that they declare that this is activated, your puppy dog or your kitty cat or your guinea pig, guess what? It now belongs to the government. Now, along with everybody who's got autism, any type of mental illness that they've been treated for, any type, right, now you're catching on. you got to read it backwards. To get it, you have to, you, yeah. Um, so, yeah, yes, it's mind-blowing, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, continuing on before Jen gets us droned. Um, all, all hazard public health and medical consultation, technical assistance, and support. ESF number eight, you know, I probably don't, we might not have to worry about getting drones. We might not have to worry about drones. Trump's hands might not be big enough to fit on the controllers. We might be okay. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> couldn't resist. ESF number eight may task HHS components and regional offices and request assistance from other ESF number eight partner organizations in assessing public health, medical, and veterinary medical effects resulting from all hazards. Such tasks may include assessing in exposures on the general population and on high-risk population groups. Paying attention here? Conducting field investigations including collection and analysis of revel revel uh, relevant samples, I'll get it right, 
providing advice on protective actions related to direct human and animal exposures and on indirect exposure through the contaminated food, medical treatment, oh wait, drugs, sorry, water supply, and other media, and providing technical assistance and consultation on medical treatment, screening, and decon decontamination, sorry guys, I'm not doing real well with speaking today, of injured and contaminated individuals, I know it's every day, <laughs> while state, tribal, <laughs> While state, tribal, and local officials retain primary responsibility for victim screaming, screening or screaming, either one, and decontamination operations, ESF number eight can deploy the national medical response teams to assist with victim um, decontamination. Now, here's the thing here, right? Okay, there is a lot in that paragraph. There is a ton of in that paragraph and there might be one this is under the uh, all hazard public health and medical consultation it's under this section here so um i uh you know if you want to go back look over that i don't know i think i maybe it's pay i don't know if it's page six or how they're doing that there yeah i guess it's page six okay so if you're interested in uh reading that a little bit deeper because it literally there is so much information packed in there Behavioral health care, ESF number 8, may take HHS components and request assistance from other ESF number 8 partner organizations in assessing mental health and substance abuse needs, including hmm. <laughs> psychological first aid, whoa, behavioral or cognitive limita limit limitations requiring assistance or supervision, providing disaster mental health training materials for workers, providing with assessment training and program development activities undertaken by the federal, state, tribal, and local mental health and substance abuse special, and providing additional consultations needed. So, see, I could even look into this and say maybe this is one of the reasons why they're encouraging abuse in this country i know i know i know but they put these laws in they 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 made it more illegal yeah okay is that why our troops are guarding the poppy fields is that why um our planes was bringing the uh the stuff here <laughs> crazy crazy problem reaction solution keep that in the back of your head at all times Public Health and Medical Information, ESF number 8, provides public health disease and injury prevention information that can be transmitted to members of the general public who are located in or near areas affected in languages and formats that are understandable to individuals with limited English proficiency and individuals with disabilities. Wow. Hang on, I gotta take a vape. Yikes! I don't know how that thing got turned up to 60 watts. I normally vape uh, this here, I, I, I vape at about 24 watts, so being kicked up on 60 was kind of scary for a minute there. Okay, sorry about that. Alright, vector control. ESF number 8 may task HHS components and request assistance from other ESF number 8 partner organizations as appropriate. In assessing the threat of vector-borne diseases, conducting field investigations, including the collection and laboratory analysis of revel, revel, uh, relevant, I'll get it right, samples, providing vector control equipment and supplies, providing technical assistance and consultation on protective actions regarding vector-borne diseases, and provide technical assistance and consultation on medical treatment of victims of vector-borne diseases. A vector-borne disease, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that would be like um, rabies or something that a rat might have or a squirrel or a raccoon or whatever. Um, you know, that if I'm not mistaken, that's what, what they mean by vector. And I know that from doing pest control. But public health aspects of potable water slash wastewater and solid waste. Boy, this is going to be a hoot. They can't even take care of the cities now in non-emergency times and uh we're supposed to believe they're actually going to be able to help here where are they going to get the good water from that's what i want to know nestle esf number eight may task hhs components and request assistance from other esf number eight organizations to assist in assessing potable water 
wastewater, solid waste disposal, and other environmental health issues related to public health and establishments holding, preparing, and or serving food, drugs, or medical devices at retail and medical facilities, as well as examining and responding to public health effects from contaminated water, conducting field investigations, including collection and laboratory analysis of relevant samples, providing equipment and supplies as needed, and providing technical assistance and consultation. One of the things we're going to be getting here and uh, some other pretty important stuff here. Um, one of the things that, that you need uh, to remember with this stuff, and, I, and I, was, I know I've been joking a little bit with this. Um, it's long. It's boring. I'm hopefully keeping at least a little bit of folks' interest because this is important. I'm not important. This information is important. Um you know, and the interesting thing is, is just how, if you look at this, what this is, essentially, it's like, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a defining of martial law, right? It's, uh, it, it's, it's solidifying their powers and their abilities uh, in, in the case of what they are going to declare as a, a disaster, okay? Um, so... You know, it's essentially, like I say, you know, martial law is kind of almost like a, a blanketing, right? Pretty much martial law means curfew, you don't have, you know, you, you basically you got to ask permission to, to go to the bathroom, right? So, you know, this is, this is defining that. This is going through and, and making sure that they have the powers they need to do whatever it is they intend to do. Notice I said intend to do, not need to do, because, you know, yeah, I don't think we need what they want to give. Mass fatality management. Yikes. I'm going to take a vape before I even get started with that. All right. Sorry, folks. I'm a vapor. I'm a nicotine addict. So, you know, it is what it is. Mass Fatality Management, ESF number 8, when requested by state, tribal, or local officials in coordination with its partner organizations, will assist the uh, jurisdictional medical legal authority and law enforcement agencies in the tracking and documenting of human remains and associated personal effects, reducing the hazard prevented by chemical or chemically, biologically, or radiologically contaminated human remains when indicated and possible. Establishing temporary morgue facilities, determining the cause and manner of death, collecting antemortem status or data, antemortem, I think it's how that's pronounced, uh, data in compassionate and culturally competent fashion with authorized vigils performing post mortem data collection and documentation identifying human remains using scientific means like dental uh, pathology, anthropology, fingerprints, and as indicated, DNA samples. Entering, processing, and returning human remains and personal effects to the authorized persons when possible, and providing technical assistance and consultation on fatality management and mortuary affairs. In the event that caskets are displaced, ESF number 8 assists in identifying the human remains, recasketing, and reburial in public cemeteries. ESF number 8 may task HHS components and request assistance from other ESF number 8 partner organizations as appropriate to provide support to families of victims during the victim identification mortuary process. Vet veterinary medical support. ESF number 8 will provide veterinary assistance to ESF 11. Support will include the, what the heck is that word, amelioration, something like that, of zoonotic disease and caring for animals where ESF number 11, 11 does not have the requisite expertise to render appropriate assistance. Research animals, huh? ESF number 8 will assess, assist ESF number 11 as required to protect the health of livestock and companion and service by ensuring the safety of the manufacture and distribution of foods and drugs given to animals used for human food production. ESF number 8 supports DHS FEMA together 
with ESF number six, mass care, emergency assistance, housing, and human services, ESF number nine, search and rescue, and E11 to ensure an integrated response to provide for the safety and well-being of household pets and service and companion animals. <sighs> I'm telling you, if you go in and you start searching these, the ESFs, and you go through and you read them, probably probably have a mental breakdown to be honest it would it would probably freak you out that bad i haven't done this, this is something that i am going to do in fact i'm, I'm going to go and get uh, copies of all of these esf documents um and and get a copy for myself and i'll put them up on the site and stuff as well wow ESF number 8 supports ESF, ESF number 6 by providing expertise and guidance on the public health issues of medical needs populations. Actions, continuing actions, headquarters and regional support. ESF number 8 continuously acquires and assesses information on the, the EMG, ESF number 8 regional staff and the ESF number 8 liaison staff in the RRC JFO continue to identify the nature and extent of public health and medical problems and establish appropriate monitoring and public surveillance. Other sources of information may include state incident management authorities, officials of the responsible jurisdiction in charge of the disaster scene, ESF number 8 support agencies and organizations, various federal officials in the incident area, state health agriculture or animal health officials. And again, sorry, I'm not speaking, I, you know, I do know a little bit better than this. Uh, let's see, state emergency medical services authorities and tribe officials. Because of the potential complexity of the public health and medical response, conditions may require ESF number 8 subject matter experts to review public health and medical information and advise on specifics to manage and respond to a specific situation in the most appropriate manner. I was looking over to see how many people I ran off so far. <laughs> Again, guys, I know. I know this is extremely boring. And none of this is funny stuff. I want to point that out. Be clear about that. I don't think this is funny. Not for a bit. But if I don't laugh, if I don't joke, not going to be a good day. So, I mean, this stuff just, it's, 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 it's real for me to sit and look out and observe the, uh, the citizens of this country and knowing, knowing what the future holds or at least a rough idea of what the future holds. You, we, we've got to get this information out there. We've got to make people aware, and it's got to be now. Because see, the thing of it is, when when they go to do their thing, they are going to cut communications. And anybody that wasn't in the know before they did that is not going to be in the know. Period. Not to act on this now. The last time you want to learn how to fly a plane is when you're on your way down. Probably not a good time to decide you need to learn how to fly it. Headquarters and Regional Support. ESF number 8 continuously acquires and assesses information on the MG ESF number 8 regional staff and ESF number 8 li or liaison <laughs> staff in the RRC JFO. Oh, boy, I probably read that. Sorry. Uh, let's see. State Incident Management Authorities, officials of the responsible jurisdiction in charge of the disaster scene, ESF number 8 support agencies, and various federal officials in the incident area, I think I've read all of these, actually. Sorry about that. I think I did. Yeah, I did. Sorry. It happens. I didn't scroll is what I did. Activation of public health slash medical response teams. HHS components are deployed directly as part of the ESF number 8 Respond Health and medical personnel and teams provided by ESF number 8 are deployed under a DHS FEMA mission assignment. All right, we're getting somewhere. Hey, I, I, I'll at least throw this out there so you know. The last page is blank. <laughs> Coordination of re requests for medical transportation is a major public health or medical 
emergency, local transportation assets may not be sufficient to meet the demand. State, tribal, and local requests for federal medical transportation assistance are executed by ESF number 8 in coordination with FEMA. Such assistance may include accessible transportation for medical needs populations. Coordination for obtaining, assembling, and delivering medical equipment and supplies to the incident area. ESF number 8 will coordinate with DHS, FEMA, VA, DOD, the General Services Administration, and other federal required to arrange for the procurement of transportation of medical and durable medical equipment and supplies. So what is that telling you? What is that saying? That is saying is, in the event that this is activated, they can take your car. They can take your vehicles. They can take your transportation. You guys know this. This is nothing new. You, I, I know you that under uh, a state of emergency um, that the U.S. government uh, has enacted legislation um, in, where, in which they basically they take control of absolutely every single aspect of our life and death, as a matter of fact. So it's not nothing new. But this solidifies it in a place, especially on, on, on FEMA and involving Department of Agriculture and the, the Postal Service and all these other, other partners in this. Um, you know, that's the important thing to look at. You got to look kind of at the whole big picture here. And I get it, right? If I was going to stage some type of disaster response, I'd see something similar to what they're doing here. Something similar. Similar. But there would be a lot more restrictions on what the government can do and when they could do it. It wouldn't be something that once they turned on that light switch, they just had free reign to do whatever the hell they wanted. And, and that's what this, this is giving them free reign to do whatever they want. Communications. ESF number 8 establishes communications necessary to coordinate federal public health medical and veterinary medical assistance effectively. Public Affairs Information Requests Requests for information may be received from various sources, such as the media and the general public, and are referred to ESF number 15, External Affairs for Action and Response. ESF number 8 makes available language assistance services such as interpreters for telecommunications devices for the deaf and accessible print media to facilitate communication with all members of the public. I don't know. I think it would probably have been pretty good public affairs if they would have let those trucks of food and water and supplies through down in Katrina. Right? That would have probably been a pretty good bear's move. Nah. Send them back. Let them die. That's what they did. Let's see. ESF number 8 on completion of the incident prepares summary after action and lessons learned reports. These reports identify key problems. Well, that would be the Just put that there, a big G right there on, on that page, and then just like delete that entire thing. Not just its thing. I'm talking about delete the entire government. Uh, let's. <laughs> and this is, this is, this is, this is nuts. Let's see. Um. I don't know if I read all that or not, but put the link down in the description if I missed stuff, if I've overlooked it, or if I covered the same thing ten times, I apologize, but that's why I'm putting the link down there, so not only you can read it yourself, but please, 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 please save a copy, right? Jesus saves, remember that. Uh, let's see, primary agency, HHS. Leads the federal effort to provide public health and medical assistance to the affected area. Coordinates staffing of the HHS EMG to support the response operation. Requests appropriate ESF number 8 organizations uh, to activate and deploy public health, medical, and veterinary medical personnel, equipment, and supplies in response to requests for federal public health and medical assistance as appropriate. Uses HHS personnel, um, which is uh, Service Commission Corps, NDMS, Federal um, Civil Service, and civilian volunteers to address public health, medical, and veterinary medical needs. Assists and supports state, tribal, and local officials in performing monitoring for the internal patient contamination and administering pharmaceuticals for internal decontamination. Got to be getting there pretty close here, folks. I know, it says 10 of 6.
or 10 of 16, <laughs> assist state, tribal, and local officials in establishing a registry of potentially exposed individuals performing dose reconstruction um, and conducting long-term monitoring for potential long-term health effects. I wonder if that was like, you know, what they did in St. Louis, what was that, in the 50s or the 60s, where they were spraying radioactive uh, chemicals on the, uh, on the on the poor neighborhoods. I, I, I wonder if, uh, yeah, they were just off the facts. They weren't hurting nobody, right? <laughs> that was just colored water, wasn't it? <laughs> you know, this is the thing. This is this is our government, folks. This is our government. We are res- our government. Our own government isn't responsible for our own government. That's what's been going on for the last 120 years. And you see where that, that got us. You see where that got us. Right? Because we the people got comfortable. We the people stopped keeping an eye on them. And all it took was a little bit of time for them to start running with whatever they wanted to do. And, uh, and we're sitting here where we are today. We are the only ones responsible. We're the ones responsible for how far it's gotten. We're the ones responsible for whether or not it gets... It's on us. Us. And please... No, it's not on our children. It is on us. We're supposed to do that, right? We're supposed to care and love about our kids enough to be able to try to at least prevent them from getting hit by a train. That's that, that's the part that frustrates me the most about this whole shindig. Whether it be just this, this one document or whether it be every single thing I've covered. I see people posting pictures of the uh, of you know the kids and having fun and doing so. Oh, I love my kid. I love my kid. I'm not saying they don't love their kid, but I think there's apparently different levels or something because I certainly would not want to leave this mess to my kids. If I didn't have kids, I am a decent enough human being. I wouldn't want to leave this place for your kids, right? I would be fighting the same fight for your kids. That's a fact. It's one of the reasons we do this. Right? I don't do this for popularity. I don't do this for notoriety. I definitely don't do this for money. Gotta be some reason I do it. If you talk to me long enough, you find out that I'm not a real big fan of people. <laughs> I used to be. I used to be much more social. But if you talk to me enough, you'll find out that I'm not a real big fan of people. I'm definitely not a fan of this society. But, I'm not children to be punished because the adults were either too busy, too concerned with other things, or whatever the case may be, that whatever excuse they used to sit on their ass and not do a damn thing. I told you, I'm taking the gloves off. I wasn't joking. I mean, I'm going to sit there and curse nonstop all throughout my shows, but I'm taking the gloves off, and I'm going to take me a few damn shots. I mean that, like, with a fizz. I mean it figuratively, not literally. Thank you, NSA. You know, I, you know, it, it's at that point. You know, what I'm basing a few shots, I'm going to start calling some stuff out. There's a, there's a fair amount of information that, that I have that, uh, that is not out there. And, um, puts me at a fair risk putting it out there. So... You know, I, I'm getting to that point to where if, if we don't step up together, right? See, that's the thing. That's the thing I keep trying to explain to folks. If we do this together, if we stop fighting over a damn flag, you know? If we stop fighting over this crap, we can fix this. But we got to stop finding reasons to... Pick people apart. It's ridiculous. Where in the hell is the decency? The common sense. The compassion. That's why I'm not a big fan of people. That'll give you a little bit of a hint why I'm not a big fan. 
right? When TV shows and ball games are more important than their own children's future, you don't get a damn bit of respect from me, and I damn well hope you get no quarter. No quarter. Sorry. and blood product supplies throughout the year using the blood availability and safety information system as baseline data for ESF number 8 activation. Liaisons with the AABB Interorganizational Task Force on Domestic Disasters and Acts of Terrorism to assess and let it coordinate a national public blood announcement message for the need to donate. Monitors blood and blood product shortages and reserves, including the safety and availability of the blood supply. Activates NDMS as necessary to support. Evaluates request for development, or I'm sorry, deployment or redeployment of the SNS and federal medical stations. Let's see, uh, based upon relevant threat information. Coordinates public health and medical support, patient evacuation, and movement requirements supporting departments, agencies, and governments throughout the incident. Assures the safety and security of food in coordination with other responsible federal agencies in, cooper in cooperation with state, tribal, and local officials assesses whether food manning, food distribution, food service, and food retail establishments in the affected area are able to provide safe and secure food. In cooperation with state, tribal, and local officials as well as the food industry conducts tracebacks or recalls of adulterated products. In cooperation with officials, ensures the proper disposal of contaminated products and the decontamination of affected food facilities in order to protect public health. Provides support for public health matters for radiological incidents as a member of the advisory team for environment, food, and health. And it goes into the different agencies and their direct responsibilities and whatnot. It's the rest of it. And, and you can read that, but you get the gist of it. You, you're getting the ideas of it, okay? But it will go into, uh, I'm sure, like, okay, Postal Service. Let's, let's just see for the heck of it. What, what do they got to say about the Postal Service? Assist in the distribution and transportation of really? medicine, pharmaceuticals, and medical information to the general public affected by a major disaster or emergency as needed. I <laughs> see they neglected to mention the census in there. There you have it. I'll put the link in chat right now, and uh, I'll put the uh, link in the video description. And I apologize. I get frustrated. I'm sorry for that. I do not like getting upset. I do not like getting angry. But when when I when I look at little kids and see the compassion or caring or giving the least bit of a damn about their future and then to sit there and say you love your kid really maybe you love them as long as it's convenient maybe that's what it is right because that's so popular these at the American families or should I say the lack of American families and it's frustrating to sit back and watch all this because I don't turn on that stupid idiot propaganda box. Instead of filling my mind with mindless TV shows, nothing. They do no good. See, see, I think we are here. We, we should be learning. We should be learning. We should be trying to move forward. We should be trying to better ourselves, not only as individuals, but as a human race. Nah. Got to watch the football. Oh, the future. What's the 49ers going to do? Right? No respect. And I damn well hope no quarter. Now, if you don't understand that statement, Google it. Our plate is full, folks.
Let me know when you're ready to start eating.